What is up to all my Baggins Dragons out there? Welcome to another episode or podcast of Diary of a Silver Pourer. This is my January edition for 2019. Like I said at the end of the year last year, I'm going to be doing one of these every single month talking about silver pouring, what I've learned, new stuff that I've tried, and it's going to be a lot of fun, super awesome. Definitely for me also to look back on and see how I've progressed rest over time. So if you do want to get into silver pouring, I got a lot of good information in these. Or if you just like to listen to someone talk about silver, precious metals or whatever, or you like to learn about pouring just for fun, you have no interest in doing it. These can also be great for you. Um, So yeah, let's just get right into this one. I'm very excited about it. So it is January and we're actually coming to a close. I thought I was going to be making these maybe at the start of the month, but it seems like it might work better to make them towards the middle or end of the month to kind of talk about what we've done so far. So it's January now. Uh, As I'm recording this, it is the 25th of January. I think I'm going to post this maybe tomorrow or the next day. And I have still never poured anything bigger than 20 ounces. However... I have a very large pour that I'm going to be doing very, very soon. I cannot wait. I got a new mold in. It is a one kilo mold and I've got some silver and I am going to be joining the kilo club very soon. So, yep, you heard it first right here. I haven't made any videos on that, but be looking for that video because that's going to be an epic pour when I actually finally pour a whole kilo of silver. I'm a little bit nervous about it, I guess. There's a lot of stuff that could go wrong, but it's, you know, it's probably going to be okay. Like my 20 ounce bars that I poured were were pretty, you know, they turned out really good actually. And it's very heavy to pour a whole 20 ounces. So, you know, 32 plus can't be too terrible. Uh, kilos over 32 so I'll probably shoot for 33 and then just end up pouring a little heavy hopefully which that's okay if it if it weighs a little bit more than a kilo I just don't want it to weigh less because I've got no way to get it back in the crucible if I mess it up uh, because it'll be too big so anyway yes I'm super stoked for the kilo pour and it's probably going to happen this month at the end of the month uh, maybe I'll pour it on Monday I'm, I'm not totally sure but uh, that's going to be super fun. Uh, what is new that I have poured so far? Well, uh, up until this year, I hadn't poured any other shapes other than the rectangles, um, you know, or silver bars, ingots, whatever. And I started pouring the silver hearts. And so let's talk about the silver hearts that I started pouring. Um, those are really fun and really, really cool. I'm stoked on the silver hearts. Uh, the first one that I poured is going to go to my wife for Valentine's day. And I just stamped, I love you on the back. It was a little over two ounces, I think. And, um, I think she's really going to like that. She, I think she still doesn't know. She didn't watch that video that I made on it. So (laughs) she actually has started watching my videos and actually started helping me package up orders to ship out and stuff. So actually, if you have a silver bar coming from me, it might have her handwriting on it for the address. So it probably looks way better than my handwriting. But anyway, (laughs) Um, so she's actually starting to kind of help out with the channel a little bit and whatnot, which is really cool. And I'm really stoked on that uh, because, you know, it's good. It's it's uh, something we can do together. And and I really enjoy that. But uh, so I, I am excited to give her that silver heart, which if she on the off chance does listen to this whole podcast, she'll know she's getting it. But so far, she doesn't know. So shh, don't tell her. <laughs> but anyway, um, other than that heart, I have poured, uh, you know, another batch of hearts and did some custom stamping for some people for, you know, their wife or, or girlfriend or loved one or whatever. And, uh, I will say the hearts pouring the hearts are, um, definitely harder than pouring bars just because it, it is a weird shape and you got to do kind of a quick pour. I'm, I'm sort of learning that you need to, when you actually pour the silver out, uh, I guess one tip that 
I, I didn't really realize this when I first started. I thought you wanted to have like a really kind of slow, even pour, which you do, but you don't want it to be too slow because it'll start to harden. And so you kind of need to pour it a little bit quicker than you think. Just sort of get it out almost as fast as you can and then stop abruptly uh, so you don't over pour it. Um, and then it will all, if you pour it fast enough, it should fill all the mold pretty well. And then it, then it will start to harden, obviously. So, you know, when you're doing these small pours, like the two ounce or, I mean, even one ounce or whatever, uh, you got to pour them pretty quick. So I'm definitely learning that with the hearts. I had a couple hearts that I tried to pour, which I didn't show these on camera just because they were really brutal mess ups, but I poured them too slow and they sort of, uh, you know, kind of sludged up and didn't fill one of the whole top parts of the heart perfectly or whatever. And, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a perfectionist and even some of them, the, um, ripples ended up having kind of some big craters in the middle. Cause I had the, uh, gas turned up too much on the torch. And so I had to repour those just because, you know, I, I want the hearts to be really good and, you know, they are sort of a sentimental piece. So I want them to look beautiful and everything. The Baggins bars, I also want to look beautiful and awesome, but, you know, those can have a little bit more character because those each tell a story. You know, every bar has got the different dragon fire or ripples or, you know, just sort of design that ends up on the top of those. Uh, and so those really do tell a story. And I, I love making the Baggins bars. Those are super fun. And honestly, when I started pouring them, I thought they were all going to be just like kind of ripple bars with a similar ripple pattern. And, you know, they're all going to look very similar. But the more and more I pour, you know, the more unique and interesting they are to me and I hope to you guys. And um, it's just I'm having a lot of fun with it. In fact, we're up into the 90s now with bag and bars, uh, Baggins bars. I I'm kind of transitioning to that. Well, let me finish up on hearts first. So anyway, the hearts, I'm still pouring those. They are still, still super fun. I do have a lot of people that want hearts and I'm going to get those poured for you. Hopefully get them out before Valentine's day. So that should be awesome or your anniversary or whenever you want them. And, you know, I'll just continue pour those basically forever. So if you ever want me to pour you a silver heart, just let me know and we can get something worked out. But okay. So let's move on to the Baggins bars. Yes, the Baggins bars, we are up into the 90s. Oh my goodness. I think, yeah, we're up to 94 now. 94 bars poured. Wow. <laughs> that is super awesome. Super fun. Um, I The next batch I do, we're going to go over 100, which is going to be insane. Over 100 bars poured. And so, you know, that is, that's quite a few amount of, I mean, that's a lot of pours, you know, I, there are some that I guess I did mess up and have to repour. Uh, you know, I'm not sure what my percentage of keepers to, to remelters are. I definitely know when I first started, I had a lot more remelters. Now I can sometimes get like, you know, maybe even 10 bars in a row that are all keepers and I don't have to remelt a single one. So I still mess up on occasion, but I think my percentage is getting a lot better. Um, you know, when I first started, it was probably I had to remelt like uh, two thirds or half of all the bars were not keepers. Now I'm only remelting maybe like 20% of them uh, just because either I pour them too heavy or too light or sort of mess something up and they end up kind of weird. So, you know, for the most part, I'm keeping almost all my pours now. So I'm definitely am getting better and improving. And I'm, I, you know, that just goes to show it takes when you're first starting out silver pouring about a hundred pours till you start feeling pretty confident about it. And, you know, every time I guess I tip the crucible over, I'm always still a little apprehensive, like, okay, is it going to come out? How fast? <laughs> like, you know, it's, uh, it, it, it's fun and I'm still learning. Absolutely. So I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm like a pro silver pour by any means. I'm still very, I would say probably on the amateur side, but, um, you know, starting to get pretty, pretty good at it, I guess, as far as I can tell anyway. And, and I have had a lot of comments too on my videos where people say, Oh my gosh, you're like a veteran pourer now. And maybe it looks like that on video. Um, I, you know, I, I feel like it actually looks a little bit better because now I'm resting the crucible on the mold. So it looks a lot smoother and not just floating in the air where it looks like I'm totally shaking with, you know, uh, tremors or something. But, uh, so I, I guess it does look a little bit better now, but, um, 
anyway, so I, I appreciate all those comments and, and I hope it does look like I'm a veteran. I, I certainly don't feel like a total pro in my heart of hearts yet, but <laughs> we're getting there. So I will say uh, with the stamping of the bars, I feel much more confident. That is one thing that I feel like I've really, really improved on since I started uh, you know, when I first started, I was literally like scared to stamp the bar because I didn't want to mess it up or put a stamp sideways or upside down or, you know, uh, have it be too deep or too light and then I have to restamp it and then I, it's a little off and it's doubled or whatever. You know, now I feel very, very confident when I go to put the numbers on and whatever I'm stamping on, I know what it's going to look like. I know how to space it better. Uh, you know, I, I will say that is one thing too, that when you're first starting off with the stamping, you have no idea how hard you need to hit it or how light really you need to hit it to get a good stamp, how to move it around, um, how to properly space the stamps apart because, you know, like the letter stamps or the number stamps, they all sort of cave in towards the part that touches the metal at the bottom. So when you hold it up next to the stamp you just made, you don't really know how far to space it apart. But over time, you kind of can, you know, sort of guesstimate, okay, I should probably put it a little bit closer than I think, which you really do have to do. You know, if you just put it literally directly down on where you think it should be, you're probably too far away. You need to move it in a little bit. And, you know, even to where you think like, oh my gosh, this might overlap the other stamp and then you stamp it and it totally doesn't. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the stamping, I feel like I definitely have improved, uh, which is good. So, yep, it is January, 2019. Um, I've got, let's see, I've got the rectangle molds. I've got the heart mold and that is all that I have poured so far. I did tell you guys that I have the new kilo mold, which is a bar shape. So that'll be another bar. Um, I do have, other than that, three more molds that I have at my house that are not rectangles. And I haven't really talked about them or what they are yet. And so I'm going to save that probably for next month. I probably will do some pours on them. Actually, I know I will do some pours on them. Uh, next month is February, which I will finally be free from YouTube jail. I, I cannot wait. It's literally in less than three weeks. It's like a little over two weeks away and I'll be able to live stream again and it's going to be fun. It's going to be a party. I've got some really fun stuff planned. I do also have my 2K sub giveaway that I'm doing next month. So that's going to be really, really fun. Uh, but I do have some special pours I'm going to be doing for that. And uh, you'll just have to wait and see because they're going to be very awesome, very cool. I, I really cannot wait to do those special pours uh, for when I get freed. So I'm kind of alluding to there's going to be a sort of a special celebration pour or something, I guess. Uh, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be a cool design and it's also going to have some cool stamping on it. So you'll just have to wait and see what that is. But anyway, I think I'm going to do this one a little bit short. Uh, I think usually I go 15 or plus minutes. Uh, uh, well, well, we're coming up on that now. But anyway, that's all I got for January 2019. Um, I'm excited for the next month and everything that's going to happen in February as far as pouring. And so, yeah, thank you so much for uh, listening to my Diary of a Silver Pour. I'll see you in the next one. Silver Baggins out.